What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and uh, we're gonna talk about a new product today from Asatech. Now Asatech's a brand that automatically elicits a lot of like AIO and water cooling stuff for computers. No, this is not an all-in-one, it's an all-in-foot. Asatech is getting in the high-end racing sim components, and we're gonna start it off today by taking a look at their pedal system. I told you guys I was building a new sim rig. We're only do gonna use the best parts, and this is where we're kicking it off. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. We should even grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Mino. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. Hey, it's RGB ready. <laughs> anyway, okay, so we've got two different products here. This is the Invicta. Technically, it's a pedal system. The clutch is separate. Uh, so I guess if, uh, depending on the type of racing sim you're setting up, I feel like all racing sims should have a clutch available to it anyway, but I guess if you're looking at like LMP series, um, IMSA type stuff, I mean, the Formula One, they're all gonna be gas and brake, right? Because those are automatics. But um, because I like to do a lot of different driving style, old cars, new cars in The Sims, I definitely need to have a clutch. So the clutch is separate. For those of you that want to add a clutch, you'll have to add that separately. Let's take a look at the main part here of the Invicta, brake and throttle. These are not just hydraulic systems, which you're gonna see a lot of um, in the industry. And it's funny because I was a little leery at first when they said, hey, do you wanna check out our pedals? Cause I was like, okay, you can have a great or terrible pedal system in a sim rig. I'm currently running all the Fanatec Club Sport stuff. Their pedals are okay. They're definitely better than what you, like leagues beyond what you would get with like Logitech. And quite a bit better than what you'd get with like Thrustmaster. But they are just like at the top of the low end in terms of pedals. Sure, you did get a load cell that you can adjust on the back of the brake pedal. Um, you can change out spring tension on like the clutch and the throttle and all that, but you don't get any sort of adjustment. There's no hydraulic feedback and there's no, and the biggest problem with the way a lot of the pedal feel is on anything sim is you don't get the realistic feel of a real car because you don't have the proper type of resistance giving you feedback in the pedals, whether it be the clutch or the brake. And that is what makes the Invicta from Asatec just quite a bit different. Cause this utilizes what they call their Thorpe system. And we'll talk about what that is. But first let's do an unboxing here. I have not opened these up yet. I legitimately waited for this video to open it up. So my first impressions are going to be um, had along with you guys. I think it opens this way. Nope, this way. So this is what you're met with in the box right here. We got a Ziploc baggie with uh, our, these USB-C, they are. USB-C to USB-A cables. And a little box here that says Invicta. I don't know what this is. Okay. Oh, these are probably different pedal tops. Nope, I was wrong. These have the different polymers. We'll talk about what these are in a sec. They're different densities. We have some Allen keys, obviously for adjusting things. We have what appear to be some sort of spacers. So we've got some bolts, some washers, and another spring. I'm assuming this will probably be for clutch because uh, you can adjust the tension and such to get the feel where you want it. There's many layers to this <laughs> box. You know, I'm never gonna get this back in here. <laughs> okay, so this is throttle. So I guess that spring, I don't know why I said clutch. That's different throttle tension for the uh, spring on the throttle. Cool thing is you can adjust the amount of throw you have in the throttle, as well as the amount of tension on the spring with these adjustable nuts right here. And then um, in the manual, it does show you how to get this lever off right here, that the clevis is what they call it. Yeah, you could, you could definitely make that tighter if you wanted. So you got quite a bit of adjustment on that. You can change out that spring. Like I said, I do believe that to be a lighter spring. Now these are floor mounted style, which is how you would find uh, in a race car. Only in your street cars would you find pedals that hang from the firewall. Mounting it to the floor makes a much firmer uh, platform for the pedals, especially when you're in racing scenario. I, and yes, I know this is a racing sim, 
but you'd be surprised how many professional drivers use racing sim setup as realistic as they can uh, to practice in the off season or just to keep their, their skills sharp. So you're gonna want it to be as close to the real thing as possible. And race cars are always floor mounted pedal systems because they can brace this area and make it a lot firmer. And then the way that you know it pivots with your heel makes a lot more sense. Now you might find some have hanging brake and clutch and a floor mounted throttle. There's a bunch of different ways um, then that can work. So let's talk about the brake here for a second. We've got a couple things happening here. Return springs for both pedals, right? So they're right here to the side. So you've got some spring tension on that already. A street car has power brakes, has anti-lock brakes, it's power hydraulic brakes, it's designed, like the bore size of the, the, the um, actuator for the brake booster and all that, it's all tuned to be one, effective, but also two, daily drivable, comfortable. Race car brakes, however, and I learned this when I went through the Dirtfish Rally School, <laughs> they're not power most of the time. And they have a very short throw and they are rock hard. And that actually gives you the ability to really modulate them. And the difference between like completely relaxed brake pedal and locking up the brake sometimes might be only <laughs> 10 millimeters, 15 millimeters. That's the way this feels like it's set up out of the box. Let me, let me, let me demonstrate for you here real quick. So that's all the movement we have in that brake right now. And that's because I adjusted that amount of slop. So this is where the Thorpe system and their elastomers come in. Um, in their quest to make it feel realistic, they have to artificially create both the soft and the hard feeling of a brake pedal. So the soft portion of a brake pedal would be anything prior to creating any sort of hydraulic buildup and pressure. If you think about right now, if you've never thought about this, but if you think about, if, you, if you're of driving age and you drive, you put your foot on the brake pedal as you come to a stop and there's that little bit of a travel and then you feel it firm up. That little bit of a travel at the top before it goes firm is referred to as the soft stage. But once you hit that firm portion, that is when all the hydraulic slack has been taken up. Now what you're feeling is the resistance of the brake pad pushing against the disc. So they're trying to recreate that artificially. So they've created the soft stage, which you can adjust here. And that's sort of what I had just done um, by actually backing this out. So we can back this part out right here and check this out, look. So back here where the elastomer is, we can actually tune this and that's why you get the locking nut. So I've just taken all that out. There's nothing now, right? So if I back this nut off, back this out and lock that, you can see now the soft stage is now being handled by the spring. So what's happening is the piston is pushing with, the, with only the resistance of the, of the return spring of the, of the pedal, which is also existing in your road car too. There is a return spring to bring the pedal all the way up. So until we hit the elastomer, once we hit the elastomer, and look right here, you see it kind of condensing? See this whole thing moving in and out? So once we hit the elastomer, the elastomer's job is to recreate the hard stage that doesn't exist here. Now we can tune that, that's what these other two elastomers are for. And to get that off, we simply remove that nut, remove that nut, and then the elastomer, Fibrocellast is what it's called. Oh my God, is this the soft one? Cause it feels squishy. <laughs> so we've got a couple of different uh, densities here, if you will. And then what you do is you just adjust, you, you put these in and you find the one that feels good to you. But, but how, so how does it get a signal to the brake though? Check this out. This is a, actually a pressure sensor right here. And this pressure sensor is being how I'm not sure what mechanism they're using here. There is a circuit board back in here. So this pressure sensor, which is very similar to, so the way brake lights work, a little bit of an automotive lesson for you guys. The way brake lights work is you have two methods at which the brake lights know to turn on. You've got a talk, like a switch, a contact switch on the bottom, like right here on your pedal. So it'll be sitting there. And when you push the brake pedal, it goes and it pushes the, the, switch, the button in and that's what tells it, hey, the brake lights are turning on. So that's an electrical connection. Or on a lot of older cars, it is a pressure switch. So as the pressure builds up hydraulically, 
That pushes a sensor in here to make that electrical contact, which then sends a signal down a wire to the brake lights to turn on. This is actually more reliable than the electrical switch, because the nice thing is you know if the brake lights are coming on, it's building pressure. But you can have this contact happening here, lose all your hydraulic pressure, pedal goes down, brake lights come on, but you have no brakes. So I prefer the hydraulic switch, which is actually what I'm using on my 68 Camaro instead of a, the electrical switch that comes with it, because my Willwood brake system allows me to convert to hy hydraulic. Besides the point, that's the way this works. It's converting it into a signal that then makes its way down the USB cable to your system to say, hey, brakes. The only difference is we're not actuating a brake light. We are actuating a linear switch here to tell the system during calibration how much brake force is being applied, which translates then to the simulator. So yeah, the pre-installed is white, which is medium. Hard, extra hard or hard is the green and then softest is actually the black. So I'm gonna put the black one back in there. Um, and then I did confirm that this is the hard spring on the throttle, which you can adjust the tension, like I said, right here already. Uh, and then the spring that comes with it in the bag is the soft spring. So I like the fact that you get options, you know. Now you can also adjust pedal throw and pedal, pedal travel distance with both kind of a preload and a stop. So the throttle stop is this black screw right here. So you can adjust the height of that and you can see the throttle pedal hits that. So some people might want a shorter throttle. I kind of like a long throttle, especially if the calibration gives me that full range because then I can really modulate the throttle, especially if you're playing with like high horsepower cars or F1 type cars and racing sim, then having that much pedal is definitely gonna be a good thing to modulate the throttle. Uh, but you can also adjust the angle and the front stop. So there's a back stop and a front stop. And that's with these screws right here. So I loosened up this nut and you can see as I turn this screw, you can see, and that also does soften the spring too, because as it moves forward, the spring comes under less tension. So you can adjust the pedal position and travel to your desired position. And then there you go. Same thing with the brake pedal. Although what I found is that when I loosened it up, it just went full limp noodle here and it wasn't, look, it wasn't doing anything doesn't come all the way out because it's captive, but as you can see, it didn't do anything. I'm 270 pounds and I'm standing on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's metal, it's fine. It, it feels like the rally car I drove in Washington, which felt so weird at first, but then I became extremely used to it and I really enjoyed it. And then on the ride home, with the brakes constantly because brake pedal was all mush. So now the mount system uh, is pretty unique. So you've got, depending on the type of, of, of racing sim that you've got, if you've got one of those rail systems, they do come with the rail slides that allow you to, you know, kind of thread these in on the rail slide, mounting washers, nuts, bolts. And then you can see you've got uh, one, two, three, four mounting positions on here. And this is going to allow you to mount it to pretty much universally to any sort of racing sim. Uh, so I currently have the Abado Revolution, which is kind of old by, the, by today's standards. This would mount to that, but it would also mount to any of the modern stuff. Last but not least, let's talk about the USB connection. And then we'll move over to the clutch because I'm really curious to how the clutch feel is. Two cables here, only one is needed. You do have USB-C to type C and USB-C to type A. So this is gonna give you support for older systems that maybe don't have a USB-C on the mother motherboard on the backside. So you get your USB-A. But if I show you the way that this mounts, I'm kind of surprised they did it this way, but I'm sure they have their reasons. The plug is actually right here, facing forward. And the USB-C side does go on the SIM side. And then it's got to make this bend back like that. So it just mounts down in that little tab like that. So it puts a bit of a bend on the cable, which is probably fine as long as it's not constantly moved and touched and wiggled around. This doesn't like clamp too hard on the cable. So it's not like it's preventing you from leaving it plugged in like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and you yank it real hard. I'm really just sort of surprised they didn't have it sticking out the back. Like I said, I'm sure they have their reasons, but that is how the throttle and brake system is. Let's now take a look at the optional clutch 
because you know as well as I do, I'm going to have a manual gearbox on my racing sim. That's, that's a, that's, there's no way around that. That's gonna happen. So the Invicta clutch pedal is separate, which means it's gonna mount separately. And that's probably the drawback of having a split system like this, is I would love to have one base with all three pedals. That way nothing's kind of independently maybe able to creak around, you know. It's probably not a problem with the way that the mounting system is. And because I don't have my new um, frame here yet, haven't even ordered one to decide what it is that I wanna use. It's probably gonna mount firm enough to where it doesn't matter, but I still would have just loved to have them be tied together. Oh. I was like, what is this for? This cable connects to this connection underneath. So they're all one system connecting to the system. So it's not a separate driver and a separate connection for this. These connect here and you can see there's even a spot for it to go through there. But is there a spot for it to come out? Yes, right here. This little rubber piece comes out. Those go like that. And you can see the cable goes across and mounts right there. So this still mounts down through several different hole positions, but here and here. However, these rods tie it in like that. Oh, and they fit real good. So because it's connected there, as long as you get the mounting point, you know, pressured up against there enough, and then it's mounted down like that, there's actually no, no play in there. There's no forward and back play with those rods in there. So there you go, it, it connects it together. The nice thing about the clutch is you have to simulate, again, the soft stage and the hard stage. And the way they do that is with a cantilever system. And this is pretty standard for clutch pedals. Look at the fulcrum point. It's way back here, right? So it's actually here, but then that changes the tension, right? Or the, or the torque angle. So as the clutch goes down, it's stiff, 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 softer. So as this piece comes up, that mimics the feel of clutch pressure and then pressure plate pushing against the flywheel. So what you end up getting is that feeling of soft and then hard, soft and then hard. And then you can control where that point happens, again, with the same adjuster screws like you see here, same stopper that we see on the throttle pedal. And then we've got our preload. So we can pre-tension the spring, lock it down. And now the spring is tighter. Yeah, that's, that feels nice. I like that. You can also change the action point by moving these because they just have a cotter pin. So if you look down in there, we've got cotter pins holding on both these uh, rods that are going through it. And you have four different mounting points where you can change the feel of that. The lower we go, the softer it's gonna be. So you could go down low, make it soft, and then pre-tension to make it feel just right. And it's gonna change also the way that that action feels of when that mechanism moves up. So you can totally customize the way that the clutch feels on there. And just like anything else, um, the way that the clutch gets a signal is just by about the amount of travel that you get. So it's, it's a pretty neat system. Definitely feels high end and robust. Everything's metal. There's no plastic anywhere on here. It's gotta be robust because if you're standing on this brake pedal, which is gonna take a lot of force, um, it's got to be all strong and made out of metal. So everything's steel, everything's strong, and I cannot wait to hook these up. I feel like using these on my sim rig at home in the meantime until I'm ready here because of the fact that one of the things I hate most about my rig at home is the pedals, even though they're club sport and they're not cheap. This brings that real race car feel um, to it. So there you go. The Invicta system from Asatec, which is such a weird thing to say. I would never have thought Asatec and high-end racing equipment in the same sentence. You know what else I wouldn't have thought of saying in the same sentence? Asatec is coming out with an exclusive direct drive steering wheel. That's the other thing you're interacting with, right? Besides the shifter is the steering wheel and how that feels. So now they're coming out with a direct drive wheel to complement this, which I really hope means they're also gonna come out with a shifter and a hydro brake. But uh, one of the things I forgot to mention too is you can adjust the pedal um, the pedal height itself by undoing the two screws in the middle of the pedal and you can move it up or down one more spot. So that way you can get the pedal height just right. So there you go, you guys, actually there's been a lot of requests lately for more sim rig type stuff because you guys know I do enjoy sim racing when I have time. And this 
from Asatech. I tell you, when they first reached out to me, I was like, uh, what? But the owner of Asatech and, and those involved in this project are diehard simmers as well. Makes sense that they would get involved in, a, in, a, in an industry where they themselves are enthusiasts. And when enthusiasts are involved in the design of something, you usually get amazing product. We'll just have to see how everything holds up, how the connectors hold up, how the hydro cell and the, um, the elastomer holds up. I imagine that's gonna get softer, a little softer over time, but the, are the hinges gonna hold up? Mine squeak at home now and I've re-oiled them and then they have a lot of play that have kind of worked their way in there. Do the switches hold up? Is it gonna stay, does it need constant calibration? Does it start giving some sort of weird signaling where like you'll push the clutch and it's like, doo, 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 doo. you know, I've seen that with my pedals. So anyway, there you go guys. The Invicta from Asa Tech, I will put links down in the description below. This literally just launched, so you guys can go and check it out if you're into sim racing. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.